The installation of domestic smoke alarms has potentially life-saving benefits. However, for many, it remains a bit of a mystery as to what that installation should look like. So if you're a bit nervous about providing adequate coverage and you don't know your D2 grade from your LD2 category, relax, because we've created a free training package to help you understand what's needed and to clear up the confusion surrounding grades, categories, types of detector, and where they should be installed. Simply click on the link in the description below to enroll and update your CPD for free. In this video, we're going to have a look at the range of domestic smoke alarms available from BG Electrical. You can see here that we've got an optical smoke alarm, a heat alarm, and a carbon monoxide alarm in these larger boxes. And looking on the side of them, you can see that they are mains powered with battery backup. When we get inside these in a moment, you'll see that the battery is removable and replaceable by occupiers, making these perfect for a grade D2 alarm system. Inside the smaller boxes, there's an optical smoke alarm and a carbon monoxide alarm, but the thing that makes these different is they aren't mains powered and run solely on batteries. Again, when we get inside, we'll find that this time the smoke alarm has a sealed in battery, which makes it acceptable for a grade F1 alarm system. Again, if you're not sure what these grades of alarm mean or where they should be used, please check out that free training package that we've made for you, for free, that you can take any time and counts as an hour towards your annual CPD requirement. Let's open up the smoke alarm and have a look inside here. You'll notice first of all that it comes complete with a dust cover that should be left in place until the install is complete. Obviously this is a critical part of the alarm as new builds, renovations and rewires are all pretty dusty environments by their nature and if this dust gets on the inside of the smoke detector then it could cause it not to operate properly. Installation is super easy as it's just a matter of lifting up this terminal cover and you've got really nice roomy connection points under there which is really helpful when you're interlinking these detectors. Up to 24 smoke and heat detectors can be connected together on a single system and up to 12 carbon monoxide detectors on a single system. Once connected, you simply screw it to the ceiling and then all you've got to do is make sure you've connected the battery up the right way round. The battery comes separately in the box ready for you to install. One clever feature of this battery terminal is this little sprung clip on the side here. You can see that when the battery is removed it shifts out and there's a corresponding pin on the base that lines up with the clip only when the battery is in place. So that means that if someone comes along and removes the battery to using their remote control, the lid of the smoke can't be put back up and it'll just stay hanging down displaying this very clear warning sign on the base until the battery is replaced. You may not be able to fix stupid, but at least you can offer a warning. Once the battery is installed, you simply close the lid up and you're good to go. While it's in operation, it will offer a fault warning if something's gone wrong internally and it's no longer able to detect a fire. And it will also offer a warning when the battery charge is low and needs replacing. It will even offer a silent warning with a red flashing LED instead of the steady green one if the alarm element of the unit isn't working. As you'd expect, the smoke alarm has a test function which can be activated by pressing the test button on the front of the device. And it's actually recommended that this is done weekly in BS5839-6. However, as experience will teach us, homeowners are every bit as diligent in checking their smoke alarms weekly as they are at testing their RCDs six monthly. So the unit has a built-in self-test where it checks itself and chirrups to say it's okay on a weekly basis. However, this is not a replacement for the weekly manual check and the homeowner should be informed of this. Of course, an actual house fire is not the only reason the detector may be triggered. There's times when it may be caused by something as simple as toast being left for too long in the toaster by those interesting people who like it mildly carbonized. This and other things can cause the detectors to sound the alarm thinking there's a fire. To stop the alarm sounding in such cases, the test button doubles as a hush button and will temporarily silence the alarm for 10 minutes by pressing the button for longer than two seconds. Another clever function is that the alarm can be put into do not disturb mode. This is achieved by pressing the hush button when the unit has not been triggered into sounding the alarm for a fire. This mode has the benefit of silencing any warning sounds about low batteries or fault mode, but only during the night so that you can get a good night's sleep and then rectify the problem the next day. Looking at the heat detector, it is a fixed temperature detector and it has the same features and functions as the smoke detector, but won't be triggered by those false alarms from burnt food and so is appropriate for use in a kitchen, but shouldn't be used in place of a smoke detector on escape routes or other areas. For more specific information about the different heat detectors and where they should be used, go and check out that free training package to help you with your CPD that I keep telling you about. And finally, the carbon monoxide or CO detector is a little different in its installation method as it has a separate base with connectors mounted in it and a fly lead that connects to the detector. This also has a battery backup with a clever feature in the battery compartment where this piece of plastic springs upon removal and stops the lid from being closed. 
clever stuff. The battery only detectors are simpler in their design as they have no incoming wiring and simply consist of a backing plate that sits on the ceiling. The smoke detector has a little locking pin in the back plate that pushes out like an Airfix model piece. The detector twists into place on the base, then there's a gap that lines up for the fixing pin and once that slid into place the head is locked to the base and can't be removed without a tool. The CO alarm has replaceable batteries and when the head is slid off the base these pins spring down when the batteries are removed, preventing it from being replaced without batteries. This range from BG Electrical provide excellent protection for many domestic properties and come with 10 year guarantees for peace of mind and crucially the range meets all of the relevant BS standards as well. If you'd like to know more about fire detection systems check out this video right here or the free training package in the description below. Thank you very much for watching.